Hi friends, today I have a topic to share with you that is what we must know about IV fluid and fluid replacement. Let's revise some basic things. Water is life. If no water, no life. We know that. Approximately 60% of our body weight belongs to water. So we can imagine the importance of water in our life. Water has many functions in our body like transporting nutrients, gases in and out to the cells, facilitating elimination of the waste and thermoregulation etc. Let's see how the water distribution in our body. Fluids within our body contained in different compartments like uh, intracellular and extracellular. Intracellular means fluids within the cells and extracellular means fluid outside the cells. This extracellular fluids again divided into two different compartments like uh, interstitial fluid which is we can see in the tissue spaces and intravascular fluid within the vessels and transcellular like CSF and joint fluids. Now we will see what are the situations or when we need to do IV fluid therapy. That are mainly fluid resuscitation and the second one fluid replacement and the third one redistribution. Let's see in details. First one is fluid resuscitation. IV fluids may be given originally to restore the circulation to vital organs following loss of intravascular volume due to bleeding, plasma loss or excessive external fluid and electrolyte loss from the GI tract or severe internal losses, example fluid redistribution in sepsis. Second one is routine maintenance. IV fluids are sometimes needed for patients who are simply cannot meet their normal fluid or electrolyte needs by oral or enteral routes, but who are otherwise well in terms of fluid and electrolyte balance. Example, during NPO after immediate post -op. Replacement. In some patients, IV fluids to treat losses from intravascular or other fluid compartments are not needed urgently for resuscitation, but are still required to correct existing water and electrolyte deficits. These losses are from GI or urinary tract, although high insensible losses occur with fever and burns. In such cases, fluid replacement is essential. Redistribution In addition to external fluid and electrolyte losses, some hospital patients have marked internal fluid distribution changes or abnormal fluid handling. This type of problem seen in particularly in those who are septic, critically ill, post-major surgery or liver or cardiac comorbidity. Many of these patients develop edema from sodium and water excess or some sequestered fluid in the GI tract, thoracic or peritoneal cavities. IV solutions mainly place into two general categories that are colloids and crystalloids. Colloids contains larger molecules that don't pass through the cell membrane. When infused, it will remain in the bloodstream and will expand the uh, intravascular volume. And crystalloids that contains small molecules and it is easily mixed up with the bloodstream. And when infused, it will easily move through the cell membrane and thus increase the fluid volume inside the intravascular and interstitial spaces. Crystalloid solutions are distinguished by their relative tonicity in relation to plasma. Tonicity means uh, the concentration of dissolved molecules. It is divided into three different groups isotonic, hypertonic and hypotonic. Let's have a quick review about that. Isotonic fluid. A solution is isotonic when the concentration of dissolved particles are similar to that of plasma. Isotonic solutions have an osmolarity that means solute concentration 250 to 375 milliosmoles per liter. With osmotic pressure constant both inside and outside the cells, the fluid remains within its compartment. No shift occurs. So infused isotonic solution doesn't move into the cells, thus increasing intravascular volume. Types of isotonic fluids include normosaline, that is 0.9% sodium chloride, ringer lactate, D5 water, and ringer solution. Now, what is normosaline? A solution of 0.9% sodium chloride is simply salt water and contains only water and sodium. Sodium is 154 milli equivalent per liter and chloride 154 milli equivalent per liter. The percentage of sodium chloride dissolved in the solution is similar to the usual concentration of sodium and chloride in the intravascular space. 
because water goes where sodium goes. 0.9% sodium chloride increases fluid volume in extracellular spaces. It is administered to treat low extracellular fluid as an as in fluid volume deficit from hemorrhage, severe vomiting or diarrhea, and heavy drainage from GI section, fistulas or wounds. Conditions commonly treated with 0.9% sodium chloride include shock, mild hyponatremia, metabolic acidosis just, such as uh, diabetic ketoacidosis and hypercalcemia. Patients requiring a fluid challenge may also benefit from normosalin. It is the fluid of choice for resuscitation efforts. In addition, it is the only fluid used with administration of blood products. Remember that because of 0.9% sodium chloride re replaces extracellular fluid, it should be used cautiously in certain patients such as those with cardiac or renal disease because of the potential for fluid volume over. Next is Ringer lactate, RL. It is the most physiologically adaptable fluid because its electrolyte content is most closely related to the composition of body's blood serum and plasma. Because of this, LR is another choice for first-line fluid resuscitation for certain patients such as those with burn injuries. It contains 130 milli equivalent of sodium and 4 milli equivalent per liter of potassium and 3 milli equivalent per liter of calcium and uh, 109 milli equivalent per liter of chloride. Ringer lactate is used to replace GI tract fluid losses, fistula drainage and fluid losses due to burns and trauma. It is also given to the patient experience acute blood losses or hypovolemia due to third space fluid shift. Both normosalin and ringer lactate may be used uh, in many clinical situations, but patients requiring electrolyte replacement, such as surgical or burns patients, will benefit more from an infusion of ringer lactate. LR is metabolized in the liver, which converts the lactate to bicarbonate. As an alkalizing solution, LR is often administered to patients who have metabolic acidosis. Don't give LR to patients who, who can metabolize lactate from uh, for some reasons, such as those with the liver disease or those experiencing lactic acidosis. Because a normal liver will convert it to bicarbonate, LR shouldn't be given to a patient uh, whose pH is greater than 7.5 because it does contain some potassium. Use caution in patients with ring. Next is Ringer solution. Ringer solution like LR contains sodium, potassium, calcium, and chloride in similar concentrations, but it doesn't contain lactate. Ringer solution is used in similar fashion as Ringer lactate, but doesn't have the contraindication related to lactate. However, because it's not an alkalizing agent, it may be uh, may not be indicated for patients with metabolic acidosis. And D5 water. D5 water is unique in that it may be categorized as both an isotonic and hypotonic solution. Uh, the amount of dextrose in this solution makes its initial tonicity similar to that of uh, neurovascular fluid, uh, making it is an isotonic solution. But dextrose in this concentration is rapidly metabolized by the body, leaving no osmotically active particles in the plasma. Because it provides free water following metabolism, D5 water is also considered as hypotonic solution. However, it's appropriate to treat hypernatremia because it dilutes the extra sodium in the extracellular fluid. D5 water shouldn't be used in, iso in isolation to treat fluid volume deficit because it dilutes plasma electrolytes concentrations. What are the nursing considerations with isotonic solution? Check for hypervolemia complications and patient education like educate the patient with uh, the signs of hypervolemia and instruct them to notify the healthcare worker if there is any signs they notice. Okay. Hypotonic solution. Compared with the intracellular fluid as well as compared with the isotonic solution, hypotonic solutions have lower concentration or tonicity uh, like electrolytes. Hypotonic IV solutions have an osmolality less than 250 milli osmol per liter. Infusing a hypotonic solution into the vascular system causes an unequal solid concentration among the fluid compartments. The infusion of hypotonic crystalloid solutions lowers the serum osmolality within the vascular space, causing the fluid to shift from the intravascular space to the 
uh, both intracellular and interstitial spaces. These solutions will hydrate the cells, although they are used may deplete fluid within the circulatory system. Types of hypotonic fluid include half saline, that means 0.45% of NaCl or 0.33% of sodium chloride, 0.2% of sodium chloride and 2.5% of dextrose in water. Administering hypotonic saline solution also helps the kidneys to excrete excess fluid and electrolytes. Next, what are the nursing considerations with the hypotonic solution? Use caution when infusing hypotonic solutions. The decrease in vascular bed volume can worsen existing hypovolemia and hypotension and cause cardiovascular prolapse. Monitor, monitor patients for signs and symptoms of fluid volume deficit as fluid is pulled back into the cells and out of the vascular bed. Never give hypotonic solutions to patients who are at risk for increased ICP because intracranial pressure because of a potential fluid shift into the brain tissue which can cause or exacerbate cerebral edema. In addition, don't use hypotonic solutions in patients with liver disease, trauma or burns due to the potential for depletion of intravascular fluid. Next we will see about hypotonic solutions. Compared with the intracellular fluid as well as with the isotonic solutions, hypotonic solutions have a higher tonicity or solid concentration, causing an unequal pressure gradient between the inside and outside of the cells. Hypotonic fluid have an osmolarity of 375 milli osmol per liter or higher. The osmotic pressure gradient grow, draws water out of this intracellular space, increasing extracellular fluid volume. Because of this property, hypotonic solutions are used as volume expanders. Examples include 3% of sodium chloride with 513 milli equivalent per liter of sodium chloride and 5% of sodium chloride. Uh, with 855 milli equivalent per liter of sodium chloride, D, D5 half NS, D5 NS, D10, and D50, etc. What are the nursing considerations for hypotonic solution? Risk of hypervolemia and pulmonary edema because of fluid shift from cells to the vascular beds, thus increased fluid overload. So, use with caution. Hypotonic solutions shouldn't be given to the patient with cardiac or renal conditions who are dehydrated. These solutions affect renal filtration mechanisms and can cause hypervolemia. Patients with conditions causing cellular dehydration such as diabetic ketoacidosis shouldn't be given hypotonic solutions because it will exacerbate the conditions and of course patient education. Next we will see colloid solutions. Unlike crystalloids, colloids contain molecules too large to pass through semipermeable membrane such as capillary walls. Because they remain in the intravascular compartment, they are also known as volume expanders or plasma expanders. Examples include albumin, dextrans, and uh, hydroxyethyl starches. Colloids expand intravascular volume by drawing fluid from the interstitial spaces into the intravascular compartment through their higher oncotic pressure. Colloids are indicated for patients exhibiting hypoproteinemia and malnourished states, as well as for those who are required plasma volume expansion but who can tolerate larger infusions of fluid. What are the nursing considerations with colloids? Because colloids pull fluid from the interstitial space into the vascular space, the patient is at risk for developing fluid volume overload. As for blood products, use an 18 gauge or larger needle to infuse colloids. Monitor the patient for signs and symptoms of hypervolemia including increased BP, dyspnea, crackles in the lungs, uh, jugular venous distension, edema, and bionic pulses. Closely monitor intake and output. Colloid solutions can interfere with the platelet functions and increase bleeding times. Elevate the head of bed unless contraindicated. Well, I think IV fluid therapy is a simple job for a nurse, but it needs close monitoring too. We know water is life. On the other hand, water can kill. Although IV fluid therapy is saving lives, inappropriate or overuse of IV fluid can cause harm for the patient. As a healthcare worker, we have to be conscious about our patient safety. I hope you enjoy my class and expecting usual corporations like uh, sharing with your friends and give me your suggestions as a comment as well. Thank you. Bye-bye.